What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. As always, it's your boy Nick here with Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. Today, we are going to dive into a real live mock draft. I think we're going to do it on yahoo.com. I haven't decided yet. And we're going to be jumping between the video camera and the live screen of my computer. So bear with me between the audio and the video and all that crap. But things are kind of starting to settle down. Drafts done, free agencies done, position battles are underway. All the beat reporters about how it's Dante Moncrief's here to take the next step. All, all those rumors are coming to fruition right now. So, so now's the time to really get into it, get it cracking. And as always, I try to add a little extra value to my videos in terms of information for you guys. So what I want to do is not just do a live draft, but I want to kind of give some tips and tricks uh, about how to get the most out of doing mock drafts or a lot of this goes into play with with real drafts too when you're in your draft whether it's online or a live draft with your friends or whatnot so I'm gonna be throwing out some random tips either before during or after the mock draft so stay tuned for that give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed any of my other stuff give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the video down low subscribe if you're new we're gonna be coming at you all off season with good good shit to get you ready for your fantasy draft and season. So let's get it. We're about to do mock draft. First question, where do you go? What is the best site to do mock drafts on? Fortunately, and especially at this time in the off season, the only places that you can go where people are actually doing mock drafts are sites like Yahoo and ESPN. And the reason I say I'm fortunate is because these sites say uh, Yahoo right here, right? They have, you know, your options of one to 14 team leagues, but they only let you do drafts that are based on standard scoring and they have their roster position set to a specific lineup. So it would be, I'm pretty sure Yahoo is quarterback, three wide receivers, two running backs, and a tight end. They don't have a flex. They don't have like two wide receivers, two running backs, or there's no, you can't adjust anything there. So when you're in the drafts, you know, people might be drafting based on half point PPR, full point PPR, two quarterbacks leagues. So which is going to obviously mess things up for you as a drafter, you know, and it's not going to be as realistic. So I'm going to just join one of these. Uh, I'll do a 10 team because my big league is always a 10 team league and I'll go with Another question is, what spot do you want to pick? If you don't know what spot you're going to be picking in, say you guys do it like on draft day, I would suggest just doing a bunch of different mock drafts and then split it up maybe like do a bunch with picks one to three and then do a bunch of picks like four to seven and then a bunch of the latter half of the of the draft pick so you get a feel for you know you don't know you don't need to know exactly who's going in exactly what spot because it's never going to work out that way the idea is to kind of get a feel for you know what guys or what range of like six to seven guys might be around in that kind of draft spot so we'll just go whatever we'll go pick four for right now i me and my friends you know we know where we're going to be drafting in our draft probably a few weeks out so we could practice these different mock drafts for a while so while we're waiting I want to go over a few things. You can go to other mock draft sites that are pretty good, and I'll talk about them right now. There's the Draft Wizard on Fantasy Pros, so it's draftwizard.fantasypros.com, and you can find the mock draft simulator through here. Here's pretty cool because you can customize different um, number of teams in your league, your draft order, and basic kind of different scoring um, adjustments that your league would do. The only downside with this is you're actually – just you're just drafting you're doing mock drafts against uh like a computerized system so i'll do one right now for you guys really quick because it's super super simple as you can see down here they already made the first however many picks and i'm pick nine so i'm on the board you know it's just it's just really simple this way and you can go through and these rankings and these and this draft is way more accurate than you would find on Yahoo because people are leaving the drafts and, and the rankings are all screwed up on those sites because they go off of the expert rankings, which are always terrible. So this is another site you can use, but you're drafting against computer, although the, because, you know, that's not fun, obviously. And then this one's cool too, fantasyfootballcalculator.com slash mock drafts. They have all different types of scoring, as you can see here, standard PPR to QB, dynasty, dynasty rookie. Unfortunately, no one really uses these until like right up until the beginning of the season. Um, so maybe bookmark this one and come back if you're in one of these like weird kind of scoring leagues. But as you can see, you know, they're all over the place when it comes to these. You can find different types of mock drafts, different types of scoring for the leagues. And you could utilize that de dependent on what on what your league does. You know, 
just right now, because it's really in the beginning of the summer, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to really utilize anything besides Yahoo or ESPN. And to be honest with you, ESPN is probably better than Yahoo because I think ESPN, you can do different team. You could do PPR as well as standard too, but I just want to do Yahoo because that's what I'm used to. And that's what I've always kind of been doing. All right. So I'll check back in when, the dra- when we're in the draft room. Oh my God. <clears throat> I'm low key, like livid right now. I'm not low key. I'm like the highest of keys just pissed off. I did the entire mock draft video when I was just doing, and I realized I wasn't screen recording it. So now I'm like, fudge it. I'm just going to do it with my camera because it's, it's old reliable and the audio is better anyways. So still in pick number four, same thing. Got Antonio Brown. I'll take him there 10 out of 10 times. Oh man, I'm pissed. Cause I got all my good facts and stats and notes and stuff. Had them ready for y'all, but, uh, we got to move on. We're going to prosper fourth pick Antonio Brown. Fine with that. The number one fantasy wide receiver started off David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Zeke, then I had Antonio Brown at four, Odell, Julio, Mike Evans. In the last draft I did, someone took someone took someone really. See, that, that's what I really dislike about these sites is just the rankings are so different than what I've seen. Like they have Jordan Howard at eight, thus making his ADP nine on this site. Because people are going to look at these rankings over here. I hope you guys can see some of those names. I'm not really sure if you can. Let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's probably better if I leave it at that. You're going to see these rankings over here and then go based off those because they don't really know any better. When they do that, they have guys like, you know, they have like Eddie Lacy at 22 here, right? And his ADP is 26. But if you went to, say, ESPN.com, they might have him ranked as, you know, the 48th player off the board and his ADP would probably be like 46. Like, you got to be really careful when you are drafting based on these and make sure you're not strictly going off of off of that because those aren't going to be the real picks here, Marshawn Lynch just went 13th. In the last draft, they didn't go to like the ninth round because he wasn't on the rankings, which is ridiculous. But uh, we had Jordan Howard, AJ Green, Devonta, Melvin Gordon, Marshawn Lynch, and then I'm up in three picks. Jay Jai. I would love Jordy or DeMarco here. Please take Dez or something. I would take any. I like a lot of these guys. Of course, there goes Jordy. And DeMarco. Sick. You have... Three wide receivers ranked up here, and then you have a bunch of running backs. But in my opinion, the wide receivers are a whole tier and a half ahead of the running backs. So between Dez, Michael Thomas, T.Y., I'm going to go with Michael Thomas here. I think he has the highest upside. We've seen what Dez and T.Y. do, and I just love him being the number one there. This is exactly how actually the last draft started off for me, too. So I have Antonio Brown, Michael Thomas, two of the top fantasy wide receivers right now. I'll be right back. I'm actually cooking something. Oh, and he didn't even miss his pick. Let's go. After I picked Thomas, we had T.Y., Des Bryant, Gronk, Aaron Rodgers, the first quarterback off the board at 21. Way too high for my liking. Then they went Lamar Miller. So we have Cooper, Eddie Lacy, Hyde. See, I still don't like any of these running backs. All big question marks. And you still have guys like Cooper. Doug Baldwin, for me, is a no-brainer here. So now I have the three number one wide receivers. I'm question number one wide receivers in their offense. Brown's been the number one fantasy wide receiver. Michael Thomas was the number one in New Orleans and should be. He has a huge ceiling this year, uh, developing that chemistry with Breeze. And then you have Doug Baldwin, who's been a top 10 fantasy wide receiver each of the last three seasons, each of the last two seasons. And, you know, nothing's really changing in that offense this year. So I have, so I love Baldwin again. So I have three wide receivers off the bat. This is my team over here, right there. Now, when I'm drafting in these leagues, my league format for my big money league is two wide receivers, two running backs, two flexes, along with a tight end. So when I'm drafting in these mock drafts, I will draft as if I'm drafting for my league. So I have no problem taking four wide receivers off the rip if that's how the draft falls to me. Um, and again, I'm not like zero RB this year like I was last year. I just happened to see that those are my three favorite guys and they were on the board while my picks were there. If I happen to have like the second pick and, you know, Le'Veon Bell, you know, would probably have been my pick there. And then when I wrap back around, who knows, maybe the other wide receivers are off the board and a running back falls to me, like DeMarco or something. Like it could easily have been two running backs instead of three wide receivers right now. But I think that being said, going wide receiver heavy in the beginning, there's plenty of like gold mines later in the draft that are like RB2s. They're the number one running back in their offense, but they're RB2s in fantasy with 
upside. So I don't mind going wide receiver heavy in the beginning. Jeez. So we had Breeze and Tom Brady both go off the board. I'm up in two picks. Let me give you a look at those are the last few. Come on camera, work with me here. I hope this comes out alright on film. So it's my pick. We still have Ingram and Spencer Ware. So these guys are much higher ranked than what pick we're at right now, but I don't see the value in them. So I'm not going to do it just because Yahoo gives me those rankings. I might even go with a tight end here because I see higher upside. But I think all in all, I'm going to I'm gonna go with Keenan Allen. Because like I said, I have two wide receiver spots and I have two flex spots on my roster. So I'm okay going four wide receivers off the bounce. My pick again. Okay, so now I still I still don't love the value here. With Now I would probably get into where I need something other than a wide receiver, right? I don't love the running back still. I'm perfectly happy going with the Greg Ol Actually, I like Travis Kelsey more than Greg Olson. So I'll go with the tight end here and not have to worry about that position because he's a safe bet to be in the top five again. When you start getting into rounds four and five, this is where anyone up in this like range is kind of in play because the rankings are so shot here. Like you're looking through guys to pick and the problem with being on Yahoo is, see if you're looking, uh, this will probably be around the range that like Joe Mixon would go, right? You look for him and if you could see there in that top left corner, that's his ranking according to Yahoo. For some reason, I, they just don't have the rookies ranked in there yet or they don't have the proper rankings, which for every reason is just ridiculous and, and now he's not even gonna be on the, the possible draft board so you're not gonna see him. Thus, he's not going to get picked, or if he does, it's not going to be in the right spot. So those are things you got to keep your keep them an eye on, keep your mind sharp on. I don't even know what I'm trying to say really right now. Go down here. You can get Doug Martin at 121, Darren Sproles at 137, Jack Doyle 145. Like it's just bad, bad rankings all around. After my next two picks, I'll kind of get into what I would do to combat that. So right now I have four wide receivers and a tight end. It's probably time to start looking at uh, running back opportunities. And there's still guys like Ty Montgomery, Frank Gore, Amir Abdullah, who I love this year, Paul Perkins, all guys who are number ones on their team. They either have really high floors or really high ceilings. Like Ty Mont, Bilal Powell, Amir Abdullah all have really high ceilings. They could break out in major way. And then Frank Gore has a really high floor. He's had the most carries in the NFL over the last two years. Everyone just keeps saying, they keep using the same storyline every year, but he keeps Regardless of him being inefficient or not, he gets the job done for the Colts and they keep playing him. Okay, so I'm going to go with, uh, I'd probably go Amir Abdullah here. He's my favorite out of Ty Mott and Blal Powell. But I could probably get one of those two on the way back too and then have two, along with my four stud wide receivers, a stud tight end, two solid, uh, two solid running backs with upside. And then if you're in PPR leagues, like you have Larry Fitzgerald and Golden Tate still on the board. Larry Fitzgerald literally led the NFL in, in receptions last year. He's been wide receiver 11 and wide receiver 7 over the last two years. And he's going, you can get him in the seventh round. It's crazy. All right, so I'm back on the board. See, Ty Mont, Bilal Powell, all still on the board. I'm going to go with Ty Mont. So right now he is the RB1 there. I'm not sure Powell is that yet, even though I think he will be by the year's end. And so what I was saying before, here's my team right now. Tony Brown, Michael Thomas, Doug Baldwin, Keenan Allen's receivers, Abdullah, Ty Montgomery, and Travis Kelsey. Um, so what I was saying before, like if, you know, obviously these rankings are shot and they're not going to be very realistic in terms of ADPs and rankings. So what I would do is go to a couple other websites while you're really getting ready. And this one is Fantasy Pros. I will link these down below, but it's fantasypros.com slash NFL slash ADP slash overall. What they do is they combine all these sites. So you see Yahoo, ESPN, CBS, FFC. And they'll give you the rankings and the ADPs from all those sites so you get a more accurate, realistic picture of where players are going overall rather than, you know, if on Yahoo, Joe Mixon's going 112th because he's not ranked, but on FFC, he's going maybe like 45th. You'll get that. At least you'll get the average of that, right? There's another good one uh, on 4for4.com, the number's 4, and they have the ADP here which basically does the same thing. It combines the a, a huge number of leagues and a huge number of websites to get a more accurate description. And these ones in particular, the FFPC and the MFL, are actually paid cash leagues, so you pay to get into them, meaning the ADPs are gonna be a lot more accurate because it's people who are playing for money. So they're not gonna bullshit around and, and make stupid picks in their mock drafts or anything like that. So these are definitely more accurate. But what I would do is mess around on there to get, a, to get a more accurate picture of where guys are really going before you start 
thinking that the mock draft that you have on Yahoo is going to be anything like the one you have in real life, that's like money-wise, because that's how a lot of guys get tripped up. They get used to these rankings, you know, and they'll be like, oh, well, you know what, in like the 30 mock drafts I did, Tevin Coleman didn't go to, he's down there, he just got picked, he didn't go till uh, round eight. But when you're doing a real live draft, he's probably going to go closer to like the fifth round, right? So you don't want to get stuck and be like, oh, like every single time you want a guy, you're like, oh, I should have reached up, I should have reached up. It's not really you reaching up, you just happen to be going by drafts that were super inaccurate. In these middle rounds, now I'm in, we're in round, yeah, we're in round eight. I have a lot of my lineup set already. I have my tight end. So these middle rounds is where I just hammer the running back and wide receiver position. If you have a tight end like Kelsey, he hasn't missed a game yet in his three years in the NFL, he's safe, he's no injury risk. I'll go ball up Powell here. No injury risk. You stack up these other players because you can go to the quarterback list, see who's left quarterback-wise. And, you know, I'd be comfortable having Big Ben, Russell Wilson, Dak, Kirk, Jameis, Derek Carr, Rivers, that, like all of these next 10 guys I'm still comfortable with starting as my, as my quarterback on my team. So now you just stack up. There's really no value difference between all those 10 guys maybe like a point or two fantasy points wise per game. So you stack up players that have really high upside or, or players that you have a hunch on, you know, this is where you'll pick like the Devonta Parkers and you just, you just stack up depth and you stack up guys that can bring value to your team. Is Paul Perkins still on the board? You know, maybe if, if you grab DeMarco Murray, you can handcuff him with Derrick Henry. I don't really advise that. I'm not a fan of that stuff, but Now's the round where I would 100% suggest just going. If you're not one of the first quarterbacks to go, say if you didn't reach up for Brady or Rodgers, you're just strictly going flex plays from here on out. Strictly running backs, wide receivers. Stack as many of those as you possibly can through these middle rounds. You pick enough RB2, RB3s, one of them is bound to pop off as an RB1. And for me, since I already have four stud wide receivers, I would probably just keep going with running backs here. Who do we got? Yep, I'm perfectly fine with Paul Perkins. I love Danny Woodhead still here. Um, Cameron Meredith is still on the board. See, there's so many good players that I'm perfectly comfortable having on my team. So whatever you want to do, if you want to stack up one position early and go four running backs off the rip, there's always going to be value at wide receiver later in the draft. There's always going to be running backs at premium later in the draft. So there's no one right way to, rent, to win a strategy. You don't go in thinking that you need to go all in on one position, all in on certain players, because things change during the draft and shit gets crazy all the time. Like you're never gonna know what actually happened. You always got that one stupid ass friend who reaches up for someone that should have been six rounds later. And you know, maybe that was the guy you wanted and, and you missed out on him. So now you got to pivot. That's really just a mock draft for you in a, in a 12 minute long video. Also something else I really, 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 really highly suggest and this is more so for when you're actually doing your like real draft, not mock drafts. And what I would do is print out an ADP sheet or just print out a ranking sheet from like a site that you trust or any site, doesn't matter. You can do it from Yahoo. But what I would do is like when you get deeper into the into the rankings is star off, put it like a little star or a check next to guys' names that you really like and that you'd be willing to reach for. Say it's like the sixth round pick and you're looking through your rankings and there's a guy at like ranked 111th, but he's not, you know, you didn't see him, but you would reach for him. You gotta, you gotta keep that in mind. So what I would do is before every pick, well, before the draft starts, I would star off the guys that I'm okay reaching for. And then each pick before you have to actually select a guy, look through that list and be like, oh, okay, you know what? I'd be okay taking him here, even though it's two or three rounds ahead of his, his ADP on Yahoo. So that's just a little tip, I would say. That's more so for live drafting, obviously. You don't wanna print out a sheet for mock drafting, that's just kind of ridiculous, but. Sometimes you forget they're there and you, and you feel like you're supposed to draft based on rankings or ADP. So do that before the draft starts. And then once you're drafting, like once you start picking, your pick's about to come, look through those players that you checked off and say, hey, am I okay reaching for that guy now? Because even though his ADP might be three rounds later, he might not be available by the time my next turn gets back. So let's let's reach up because I like him a lot more than, than the guys that are in front of him. So I guess like the number one rule here is like, don't be scared to take dudes uh, a lot earlier than they're going just because the rankings are different. Like that's the people use that shit to a fault and that's what kills them sometimes. All right, so I'm probably going to, I'm going to fast forward probably until I want to pick a quarterback or until the end of the draft and I'll explain how my team worked out. So I'll, I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. All right, so the draft is done. You got Kirk chucking the ball, Antonio Brown, Michael Thomas, Doug Baldwin, and then I would have uh, Keenan Allen as my flex, Amir Abdul and Ty Montgomery as my backs, Kelsey as the tight end, and then you can see the rest of my bench. Blah, Perkins, Cameron Meredith, Darren Sproles, Jeremy Macklin, Kenneth Dixon, Josh Doxon. 
So you can see there's no kicker or defense on my team. Let me explain this. This is a big tip for people that draft. My draft is always Labor Day Monday, which is like two days before kickoff. So I wouldn't do that normally in my draft. But for people who draft prior to the kickoff, like say you draft during the preseason, if you draft anywhere before like mid-August, I would highly suggest not drafting a kicker or a defense. Don't draft either of those spots and use those two spots for flex plays, running back, wide receiver. I'll tell you why. Because... In those last few weeks, you never know what's going to happen. Say you use that last spot. Like, those are guys that are obviously going really late in the draft, so they're not very high valued, but they're real, They're like long shot, Hail Marys, right? So for me, I don't think he'll be available at this time in real drafts, but like I picked a Josh Doxson, right? Redskins, number one wide receiver, or first round pick last season. Big, lengthy guy. It's just a good all-around wide receiver, right? Not a lot of value this year in Washington. Could be. You get him in the 16th round, right? 15th round. And what happens within those last three weeks if leading up to the season, Terrell Pryor goes down with a torn ACL or something? Now Josh Doxson basically is shoved up to that wide receiver one on the outside in that offense. And now his value went from a 16th round pick probably up to like a 6th or 7th round pick, right? And you got him super late. Uh, or you could do that with handcuff running backs, you know what I mean? So it's guys that ha are like long shot Hail Marys, but you'd rather have them sitting on your bench than a kicker in case something pops off within the last three three weeks of the season. So those so those last two spots, if you're someone, if you're a team or a league that drafts later in the summer or earlier in the summer, I wouldn't do the kicker or defense. Those those positions are fucking toss ups anyways. There's no reason to waste anything besides the last two draft spots on those on those uh, spots. That's another little tip for you. Um, but that will be my first mock draft. I'm sure I'll do a couple more throughout the summer. So if you enjoyed that with the commentary and all that good blah, blah, blah stuff, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'll be coming at you all summer with good stuff. And uh, thank you for watching if you watched up to this point. Go follow us on Twitter. Go check out the blog. All that stuff's going to be linked below. If you need any gear for your fantasy league, talking draft boards, rings, trophies, championship belts. I have a Fantasy Jocks affiliate link down below as well. So go check that out. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. You say it's good. I say it's great. But it could be better. It always could always be better. You say it's good. But it could be better. It always could always be better.